Why is Gundam 0079 still important today? With the animation being very dated, I know a lot of Gundam fans who, believe it or not, have never seen the original series. Don't get me wrong, if you are a fan of Mobile Fighter G Gundam or Wing Gundam and that is all you want to watch, you do you. But 0079 is still worth checking out, so let's take a look at the series. Grab a snack and your favorite beverage and let's get into it. The series aired in 1979 and was created by Yoshiyuki Tomino and centers around the One Year War. In the late 21st century, Earth started to experience famines, outbreaks of disease, and war over living spaces and food. To combat this, all the countries of the Earth decided to create a one world government known as the Earth Federation. The Earth Federation decided to create orbital habitats known as space colonies. The residents of these space colonies are known as space noids, and some of these space noids evolved to survive living in outer space. These people are called new types. New types have an extremely high degree of focused and spatial awareness, almost like a sixth sense. For example, they are capable of empathically detecting other new types and are sensitive to hostile intentions. The colonies behind the Earth's moon known as Side 3 denounced the Earth Federation and declared the formation of the Principality of Xeon, now declaring war for independence against the Earth Federation. The story takes place during that war and follows the main protagonist, a new type named Amaro Ray. Amaro pilots the RX-78 Gundam to help the Earth's Federation gain an advantage over Xeon's mobile suits. Now that you have the backstory, let's look at some of the things that made this anime so great. One of those key elements would be the story. The story showcases the tragedies of war really, really well. It shows how war can change a person. One perfect example of this is episode 13, when Amuro goes to visit his mother, and Amuro shoots one of the Xeon soldiers. His mother shouts to him that he's become a wild animal, and she doesn't even recognize him anymore. She tells Amuro that he wasn't raised to be such a violent boy. War has changed Amaro from the boy he once was, and he can never go back. The story also emphasizes really well that no two sides of a war are truly innocent. Now the main protagonist is aligned with the Earth Federation, but it's not as black and white as good and evil and who's right and who's wrong. In that very same episode, we see Federation soldiers stealing and terrorizing an Earth village. These are the same people they are supposed to be protecting. There is no clear line in the sand, and the way this was written, there isn't supposed to be. Another major element is the characters. The characters in this anime are outstanding. Amaro is an incredible main character. Bright Noah on the outside appears to be just a soldier. But through character development, you learn that Bright Noah is a great leader and navigates complex situations better than most people can. We also are given one of the greatest antagonists of all time, the Red Comet. Char Aznable. Char was not a shallow character by any means. Early on in the show, Char will not only win you over with his charisma, but his awesome piloting of the Zaku too. But as the series progresses, you find out that Char is in fact human and that charisma may be a facade to cover up his deep-seated rage toward the Zabi family. And later you see his rivalry with Amaro turn into animosity when Amaro accidentally kills his love interest Layla. And let's not forget that Char is the basis of a lot of antagonists in the Gundam series later on. Zex Marquis from Wing Gundam, Frontal from Gundam Unicorn, that's just to name a few. The animation, as I stated earlier, is dated, but it's equal to other great animes of the 70s, like Space Pirate Captain Harlock or Space Battleship Yamoto. The series flows incredibly fast and has 43 episodes, but by the time you reach the end, you'll want to jump straight into Zeta to continue the story. To be honest, I had never felt so immersed into a Gundam series since I was a kid watching Wing Gundam or G Gundam on Toonami. And before watching 0079 in its entirety, I have a newfound love for the UC timeline. I always found myself drifting to the Gundam series that revolved around alternate timelines. So to sum it up, if you haven't watched the original Gundam, I highly suggest you do. Or at least read the Gundam Origin manga, which is a reimagining of the original series and is still very, very good. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like on this video and subscribing to the channel.